Hi guys, for today's video, we will build a 148 scale H1G Huey Cobra from Hobby World. This is what happens when you wanted to beef up the UH-1 Huey for more true attack helicopter role in the front lines. The Bell AH-1 Cobra is a single-engine attack helicopter, developed and manufactured by Bell Helicopter. It is also called as Huey Cobra or Snake. This attack helicopter had been developed using the similar engine, transmission, and rotor system of the Bell UH-1 Iroquois. This model is a G variant initial 1966 production model of the gunship for the U.S. Army. It is operated by two crews. One is a pilot, one is a gunner. He has a power plant of one Avco Lycoming T53-13 turbo shaft, a choice of single or two 40mm grenade launchers or twin 7.62mm M134 miniguns in its turret under the nose. A pair of four pods of 70mm unguided rockets, a BGM 7A tow anti tank guided missiles, cluster munitions, napalm bombs, and an XM 35 20mm Gatling gun pod on its stubby wings. However, for this case of the model build, has some strange features, which we'll get to it later. Over 1116 H1s were built. And there will be more numbers if we include the different variants of single-engine Cobras. The H1Gs were slowly replaced by improved variants and a more robust H-64 Apache attack helicopter. Now you know some quick info of the model, let's move on to the process. As you can see here, I am creating a cushions for the seats out of modeling clay which then I smooth them out with a piece of cloth fabric in order to give a texture that looks like a cushion. However, the details are so tiny and the clay is quite a bit of a thickness of it. It may not seem its details up close. I also use modeling clay to add some finer details on the cockpit, such as the control knobs and the front part of the control panel. I also add some clay features on the joystick of the helicopter and add some arms on the pilots that has no little arms. After working on, I will spray them with a primer gray color and leave them to dry for about an hour. I started to spray two thin layers of Tamiya black paint on the main cockpit and joystick. which then I reload my brush with a dark gray for the seats. I spray the crew dark green as its base coat. Next, I carefully brush the skin color of the pilot's face using Tamiya's flesh paint. It's important to paint over it with the right thinness to prevent it from building up in details. I then use an ordinary artist black paint, wash down in water and alcohol for the face. Now for minor detailing of the cockpit and the crew. Started to paint the pilot's belt and others using khaki, and then painted the cushions with the same color. Then use olive drab for the helmet and its gloves of the pilot. Gold from artist paint for some belt buckles and other minor features of it.
and brown for its boots. I also start to paint up the buttons for the joystick and work my way into the implement panel of the cockpit. As a finishing touch, I made a seatbelt out of masking tape and a piece of wire as well. And secure everything in place with the pilot and the belt using a PVA glue. I started to assemble everything in place, such as adding weight on its nose, adding the landing bar, its wings, its top portion, and their rotors. Then seal the tool halves all together to make the whole part of the fuselage complete. Assemble the weapons pylon and its turret before topping it off with a clear canopy part that is already masked for the paint job. I also fill the gaps and sand them down for smooth finish before applying the primer coating. I also prep the missiles and its gun barrel for prime coat. I then tried to outline the panel lines and its rivet with a 4B pencil. After I've noticed, it gave some metallic look. Unfortunately, it will just be covered by the base coat of olive drop, so nah, it is bad useless. Before spraying the whole thing in olive drab, I masked the exhaust part of the model for later painting. I apply 2 to 3 thin layer of the paint with drying intervals of 30 minutes. After the base coat is finished, I tried my first time attempt of painting a shark mount. I hand painted the white color, then using the masking tape for the white teeth before spraying it with red in the inner part of the mouth. Next is to spray the Nord missiles with white color. Applied two thin layers as I made a bad mix of alcohol thinner towards the paint. Now to spray using gunmetal color, starting from the exhaust, then the aft section of the missiles. I reloaded my brush with black for the nose part of the helicopter and the blade surface of main and tail rotors. I sprayed 2 to 3 thin layers for the main rotor blade and 2 thin layer for the tail rotor blade. A little update though, as I said the features of this model is weird is because of their missiles and their gun placement. The missiles include is the one included in the kit is SS.11 Nord missiles which is historically isn't equipped by any Cobra variants. And since there are no options of equipping them either rocket or its historical missiles, I guess I have to let them pass. Spray the shaft areas of the rotor blades using flat aluminum. and a strip of yellow paint at each end of the blade. Before doing that so I apply that with white paint so that the yellow can stand out. It's a nice finish for the waters but despite issues with yellow paint being too thin again, I should be considerate in ratio of the thinner and the paint next time. I hand painted the missiles marking by hand, 
before to top it all off with a nice coat of clear spray. As always, the fun part of the build, applying the decals. It took me one full hour to complete the whole application, but not counting the four yellow strips that's supposed to be placed on the ends of the rotor blades and my small dinner break. After most of the decals had been placed, I then seal it off with another coat of clear spray. Then assemble the missiles, rotors, gun barrel, and other small parts all together before giving the final unravel of the masking tape on the canopy. After removing all the tape, I call this model a finito. The kit, despite its old age and affordable price that I buff, still stands great. However, in terms of modeling quality and historical relevance, I still can't help but to take notice of the armor and its gun placement. I have to drill a 0.5mm hole to fit the barrel inside and make it like an M134 minigun equipped. Overall, I enjoyed the build. So if you want to notify my next content, consider subscribing and follow my channel for more. Thanks for watching and keep safe.